Right, uh, morning boys and girls. Um, as you can see, I've put the engine down onto me little stand that I made. Uh, just so that I can show you a little bit easier now, because we're working on the top of the engine. And it is getting heavier to move about as we add pieces. So, what we're going to do today, we're going to... Um, we're going to put the cam followers in, we're going to put the cylinder head on and um, and then I'm going to uh, assemble the rockers and show you uh, in the next video about putting the rockers in and the push rods. But just for today's short video, we try and keep these jobs down to about 10 or 15 minutes. So today we're just going to do the cam followers. Now um, these are the cam followers for those of you that don't know what they are. They just, what they do is they sit on, they drop, they drop down into the into the block and and the rest on the lobe of the cam and as the cam turns round the cam follow pushes it up into the bow like that which in turn pushes your push rod which in turn rocks your rocker which in turn opens the valve now some people put new ones in i've never had the need to put any new ones in these have been in here probably 50 years they're not worn they're not scored uh, and there's no reason to to um not use them again uh, so it's a choice you make you can put new ones in I don't think you need it on a normal running car engine what you're not going to be thrashing around it's not a racing engine as we said before there's no reason why you can't use these cam followers again so right we'll start with the very basic now get your bit of assembly lube and what you want to do is put a little drop of assembly lube on the bottom of your cam lobe because that'll just help lubricate the cam till it gets I'll just help lubricate the cam till it gets um, till it gets running and the oil circulating. Get your oil can. Give it a little dab of oil. And then you just drop it into the into the recess in the block. Drop him in and he'll drop in. They'll all be at different levels these cam followers boys and girls because the cam is in a different position each time so we drop a bit of our assembly lube on just a bit you don't need to blather it all over it's not cheap this stuff as you know just a little bit on the bottom of it give it a squirt with the oil obviously you clean all these cam followers up give them a good clean because uh, Inside the bottom of the cam follower, you'll find they'll, they'll fill with detritus over the years, and your push rods will be running in a bit of a sludge at the bottom. So give them a good clean out. It's not a long job. We don't do these jobs to make it an all-day job. A little bit of assembly lube on the bottom of your cam follower, just a little bit. Don't go overdoing it. It just gives it that little bit of lubrication while it's running on the uh, cam. You don't want it running dry on the cam, just while the engine starts. Put some oil there because that'll help it slip down into the bar, into the bar in the block, into the the drilling in the block, the casting in the block. And you'll see some of them go up a little bit deeper than others, and you will find that the ones that um... so again, a little bit of little dab of assembly lube on the bottom, little dab of assembly lube on the bottom. Little dab of oil. And drop it into the block. Some people say that you need to keep these cam followers in the order in which you took them out of the engine. Now, I don't believe that you need to do that if you've dismantled the engine. There's absolutely no reason why you can't swap these cam followers about. You usually find that the people who want you to swap uh, keep everything the same they might very well be, say well it's the bed in the bed into the bars and the bed into this and the bed into that you've rebuilt this engine right from scratch so it's all new it's all starting again it's got to bed in again they'll all just pop into place just stick your finger in it if you can get your finger back out again they'll all stick in and it's as simple as that Nothing to worry about. They're not going to drop anywhere. You can't get them out. A little bit of your assembly lube. Just a bit. That's all you want. 
I use this driven assembly grease because I've never had a problem with it and it, it lasts. It's a good viscosity as they say. So your little dob. Little dob of assembly grease like that. And you lubricate these because over a couple of weeks, if, you, if it's a couple of weeks while you rebuild the engine in my case, you don't want them going a bit rusty. They will go rusty because mild steel will just, it'll just rust it with oxidisation in the air. Over a matter of overnight you can get a set coating on your, on your um, I mean your brake discs are a prime example. If you go out in the morning and look at your car after you've parked it up the night before, if you have a look at your discs, you'll see that they've rusted overnight and that's what happens because it oxidises. And then your brake pads will rub that off and you'll be none the wiser. So I'll just give them a little lubrication like that. They're all in place now. They're all in the block. That's it. So that's that part of it done. Not a big job. What was it taking that? It's taken us actually six minutes to do that little job there. Now, your next job is your head, gas uh, your head and the head gasket. You know we've... Uh, thread lock these into place and tighten them down with a double nut so that they're nice and tight. I've given them already a, a coat of uh, copper grease just to rub in down with the copper grease just to make sure that they don't get stuck in the head again. That'll keep it nice and free if you take the head off. It'll all help in the assistance of dismantling. Make sure your surfaces are all nice and clean and flat and I know these are. Now you get what you pay for with the head gaskets in my opinion. Now this is from the Morris Minor, Morris Minor supplier. Uh, and it, it, it costs a little bit more, but they're a better made gasket. This particular part uh, is seems to be more made up of a composite more material that looks more substantial than a cheaper gasket. And that's where your gasket will go in between these, because that's the weakest point. And it's very close together, look, there's not very much separating it. Probably a quarter, less than a quarter of an inch. And on the block, it's very narrow there. And that's that's your main part where your head gasket will go. Just on those parts there. So it must be very... Me, I, I'd rather pay more money. There's there's a crush part on it here. And I always put these gaskets copper side up. If you've bought a gasket that isn't a copper gasket, um, it usually will tell you which way to put it up. But if you buy a top quality gasket, you want copper side up, in my opinion. And that seems to be the general consensus. If you have a look on the, all your social media channels, it'll tell you copper side up. So we'll pop the gasket over the top of the head. And, and just as a, to show you, the gasket will go either way. Uh, I always put them copper side up. You can see they've got well-made gaskets because they've got the copper going right through and on the important parts. It's uh, sealed around with it. So I'll drop your gasket on. Now this particular gasket, I've not seen this before. This could be because it's a higher quality gasket. I don't know. But this came with it and it's a little o-ring. I don't know if you can see that little o-ring. It's a very, very tiny little o-ring. And it tells you that to uh, fit the o-ring to improve the oil sealing. And that's on the oil way there in the oil gallery. This one and this end is blanked. So that's number one cylinder, which we know is at the front. Now there's a there's a little oil way corresponds to it just there. Now if you drop that o-ring in there, I'm putting it on simply because it's there. And they're asking me to put it on to help improve the sealing. It fits nicely into that hole there, where the crush washer is, but it is too big to fit over the oil way. Uh, so it's not going to drop into the engine, and uh, it's there, so why not use it? Simple as that. <clears throat> so we've got our cam follows in, we've got our head gasket on that's all nice and clean. We've got our copper, copper grease on the studs to make sure that you know they're easier to get your head in and slide in and off uh, when you're taking it off again. Now, unfortunately, I forgot to uh, buy one of these. This is the bypass hose. Now, it's easier to put this on now. Uh, and it's it helps. It's a, it's a bit easier to put it on before you put the head on because there isn't much of a clearance between the head and the top of the water pump. Uh, but as I say, I forgot to get one of these. They're only a couple of quid. But it, when you're doing your rebuild, you'll put this on at this stage because it helps to do, it's easier to do it now rather than when the head's on. As the engine's out of the car, it's not a big job to do. 
when it's out of the uh, when it's out of the car. It's more fiddly when it's in the car, obviously. You can't see what you're doing. But um, anyway, under normal circumstances, I would have put that on there now. But I'm not going to use this one again because it, it could be 50 years old, it could be 40 years old, it could be 10 years old. I don't know. It's it's really hard. It's not flexible, and it it's it's likely that it would fail. We'll get our cylinder head. Now, as you know, my cylinder heads have been machined. They've had a they've had a, um, a mill taken off the head face. The exhaust valves have been case hardened seats reground into them and milled uh, to fit and they've all been uh, relapped the valves now i've got a guy uh, uh, an engineer who does this for me he charges me 180 pound if it's new valve you buy the new valve stems from him the valve seats um, sorry the uh, the oil seals the valves uh, oil seals they're about 250 for a set give him them he he machines it all reassembles it cleans it shot blasts it does everything for you for £180 for me, and to me, that is money well spent. Pop your head straight on, like so. Pop him down. So these heads that I've, these heads uh, that I um, put on my engines, they'll all run on unleaded fuel. So that's the head in place. Cam follows in place. And all we've got to do just right now, to finish off this little job, is put our nuts on this side of the engine. We can't do this side simply because we haven't put our uh, rocker gear on yet. And you'll find that when you've done the copper grease, your head bolts and nuts, they'll just all slide on very easily. You're not straining with anything. You're putting them on finger tight. And they'll all just fit on nice and easy. And we'll repaint these, clean them up and repaint them. And we'll finish the engine off. So that's that side done. As you can see, it's finished. And that's not much of a job for today. I'm going to pause the video and then I'm going to show you about the uh, rockers and the push rods. Uh, so that's that. Looks up nicely there. And like we say, just finger tighten them down, and you know they're all going to go down. There's not a problem. So that's that five done. We've only got this side to do when we put the rocker on. So I'll pause the video for now and I'll come back on and show you about the push rods. Right, what I want to show you now is a flat piece of board. I want to show you about checking your push rods. Uh, because this engine was seized up when I bought it all them years ago, I can assume that it's bent one of the push rods. Now I want to show you how it's very easy to check whether your push rods are bent or not. So I'll get a. I'll, this is one of the known good push rods. Uh, you can see it rolls down there quite easily. It's not making any unusual noises, and it's rolling down there nice and steady. The, the board's not tilted down like that. It's just barely tilted. And you can see that. Now I want to show you what happens when you put a, a bent push rod on. I don't know if you can see that. You can hear it, it's making a noise. And can you see the difference? See look, it's rocking there. That should roll there. And that's how you can tell the push rod's bent. That's an important thing to do when you do when you're rebuilding these engines. Now I know that I'm going to have to change that push rod, and I have got a spare push rod, fortunately for me. If you find that you've got bent push rods in it, you must check those because it will affect the running of your engine. Um, if you've got a bent push rod, the only way forward is to get a new one. You can get one from a scrapyard. You can't get one anywhere else. Any any mini any mini engine, any age series engine, an old mini or anything, they'll all have old push rods in. But you can see the difference there. Look. one of the good ones on to show you in comparison see that one's rolling away and that one's not rolling see that one's not rolling because it's not flat see the difference 
So that's the lesson for today. Make sure you don't put your bent push rod back in. If you bought an old engine and you're not sure if it was making a funny noise or it wasn't running properly, check your push rods. So we know that this push rod's no good. We do know, however, that the other seven are good because I've just checked them all. They're running funny like that. So, hope you uh, enjoyed that little tip. So, basically, then all we're doing, we check the bottom of the push rod. There's another thing. People say, oh, you've got to buy new push rods. If they're worn, you'll see quite clearly they're worn because it won't be shiny there. It'll be corroded on the end and it'll be flat and it just won't look good. Now, 99.9 .9 times out of 10, you don't need to do any more than that. Just drop your push rod into your, into your um, cam follower. Simple as that. Drop your push rod into your cam follower. That's all we're doing. Now obviously in this case I can only put seven in until I get the other push rod sorted out from a little list of parts. Now you can't see very clearly on this video but it, this one is higher than that one. Don't worry about that because the, the valves open and close and like I said to you the cam will turn at the bottom of the engine. The cam's turning like that. It pushes the cam follow up what we've just slotted in and that in turn lifts the push rod up and down. Like so. And that rocks the rocker, which is going to be on here. Rocks the rocker, which in turn opens the valves. All those valves are closed now. The valve will open as this lever, as this push rod comes up. It pushes an arm over, pushes the valve closed. So I'm going to I'm going to end the video for today because we've done uh, 17 minutes, and uh, I think you need to confound to about 15 or so minutes. So. Um, I hope you've learnt something today, importantly the push rods, so um, that's just a 15 minute job, we've got the cam followers in, lubed them, we've got, the, we've got the push rods in, we've got our head gasket on with our little oil seal if you've got one, we've dropped our head on, we've put the push rods in, we've checked them for straightness and we know how to watch for, for, for a bent push rod, that's the easiest way to do it, just roll them on a board, you'll soon see straight away if one's bent. Don't put a bent push rod back in your engine. So I hope you're learning something on these little videos. Uh, and thanks very much for, I've got another couple of subscribers now. Uh, and thank you very much for subscribing to the channel. I hope you're liking what you're seeing. And I, I hope it's not a lecture and that you're actually learning. That it's not difficult to do these little engines. Uh, and you can do them with very minimal tools. And you'll get a good job. Uh, so thank you very much for watching. If you like the channel, please subscribe. Uh, and I'll try and answer any comments if you if you like to comment. Uh, and um, again, I apologise if I've been sniffing a little bit. It's cold in this shed. I'm an old man. Uh, and from time to time you get a bit of uh, a cold. So uh, thanks for watching. Thank you.